Hello, welcome to Cherry Witched, a horror visual novel developed by Small Straw Bunny, available on Itch.io. And apparently, this actually takes place in the same universe as their other game, Berry Witched, which I played a while back, so check it out if you'd like to. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see what happens in this one. It's cherries this time. I guess a little content warning as well. This is a horror game, so there may be some disturbing elements. Like, apparently, kidnapping, murder, blood, drag, uh, drugging, cannibalism, child abuse, and addiction. <laughs> Viewer discretion is advised. All right, I guess I'm getting proper. Mm -mm. Do you know what makes up a witch? They're a bit different from humans, although they often make their form look similar to them. Every witch is born from pure magic, more specifically, a sort of magic nucleus. Okay, we're learning about, you know, the biology of witches, apparently. It's a science to it, you know? Almost like a pearl, more and more layers of magic build up until a witch can take form. Until they become an anime girl. During the witch's childhood, they will find their magic speciality. Or speciality? Specialty? Specialty, not speciality. Uh, that's the thing they're most magically proficient in. Takes less energy for them to do that thing than normal witch, you see. Magical energy, it isn't infinite. When a witch runs out of magic, they die, letting out a big burst of energy themselves back into the universe. Sort of a cycle of life thing, you know. Of course, witches can share magical energy with just about anything. Food, drinks, clothes, accessories, you name it. And it can probably give you a boost. But the problem with witches is that we're all selfish. Many people will do whatever it takes to lengthen their lifespans and consume as much energy as possible. That's where I come in. Okay. We have elf ears. What do you hear with your elf ears? The name's Inquiry. I'm a detective witch for the Council of Witches. Recently, I've been investigating a series of disappearances that I think are a work of a serial killer. Maybe even a group of them. It's tough work. Interviewing families and friends, the clues alone can be hard on the soul. Recent leads I've got end up leading me right into a corner, too. But despite the chaos of the world I'm in, there's always one place I can depend on for normalcy. Cherry pie cell. Okay. Taking a deep breath in, I took a step forward through the doors to a sweet little shop called Cherry Pie's Cafe. Once inside, I became engulfed in a feeling of warmth and belonging. That's just the effect this place has on you. The calming music provided the perfect, peaceful ambience for people to sit and enjoy a cup of coffee and a slice of the world's most delicious pie that isn't made of people, by the way, don't worry about it. The chairs were always nice, always clean. It was perhaps the only place I was able to actually relax during my free time. I guess, uh, I guess we're just in the witch? Well, I don't know, I don't know if it works like, I don't know, like Harry Potter or something where the witches and the wizards or whatever have their own world or they're just living in the human world you know it's just a thing anyway but here's cherry pie um well hi there sugar pie sugar pie uh, that little lady is the cherry on top quite literally her name is cherry pie cherry for short she runs the cafe with an upbeat smile and warm personality when there was downtime in the cafe she would often come over and talk to me with a cheery expression on her face and a slice, of, a slice of pie in her hands. Truly, this gal is something special. You know, this actually kind of reminds me. You know, I, I feel like I just unlocked a old memory, you know? I mean, it's something I've been thinking about um, occasionally, but like, I have this weird memory, you know, from my childhood. And I don't know where it comes from. It's, it, 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 well, it's a movie, you know? Like, I remember, like, a scene from, like, a movie and it has something to do with pie, you know? Everything I th every time I think about pie, I think about this memory. But, like, in this movie scene, which I don't have a lot of context for, I don't remember since it's been so long, I think um, it has something to do with a guy feeding pie to his family. 
like to his wife or something like that to like kill her because apparently the pie was poisoned. But then his daughter ends up eating it or something like that. So he's like, oh no, I accidentally killed my daughter or whatever. And then he, and then, you know, he sees her off and she goes to school, whatever. Assumedly, she goes to die, you know, and then he eats the piece of the pie, you know, as like an act of like, I guess, suicide. I don't know, that, that, that memory haunts me to this day for some reason. I don't know. Whenever I think of pie, I think of that scene. It probably comes from some movie, but I, I don't know. You know, I have I don't know what what movie it was. I just saw it on TV one day, and like it was kind of scary. I don't know. Anyway, this is a big tangent, but maybe that maybe it's relevant to this game. Who knows? Um, morning, Cherry. Things have been slow today. Slower than a snail in a foot race. It's a relief to finally see a friendly face. Will you be having your usual slice of pie and coffee today? And you know me well. Yes, ma'am. Sliding the usual payment over the countertop, Cher made quick work in making my usual order. So, how's work been treating you? Shh, not that great. You know, I've been tracking a serial killer and they've been killing a bunch of people. <laughs> like, uh, is the case not going well? Got led straight into another dead end. Every time I think I'm a step closer to figuring out the truth, something pops up and puts me three steps back. Well now, that's no good at all. I'm awfully sorry, Inquiry. I know I'm no fancy detective and all, but I'm here if you need to let out your frustrations. You look so tired. You really shouldn't be over uh, overworking yourself like this, you know. Cherry Pie scolded me, pouring two cups of coffee. Just the way we both liked it. Hers, sweet and full of creamer. Mine, a pinch of pumpkin spice and cinnamon. Ah, uh, you worried about me, Cherry? Very much so. I don't know what I'd do without my favorite customer visiting me every day. She brought over a tray of her, of her goodies and set them down the usual table in the corner, far away from all of the other empty tables and chairs. Well, there's no need to worry. There's nothing in the world that could stop me from visiting you, no matter how tired this old soul becomes. Is that a promise? Because if so, I'm holding you to it. It's a promise, Cherry Pie. Sorry, but you're stuck with me. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. I'll gladly be stuck with you any day. Uh, but anyways, Cherry took a long sip of her drink, pushing my cup towards me. What's been happening in your case, if you don't mind me asking, as I pry into your confidential police, you know, data. I paused for a moment, staring at the pastry chef in front of me with a puzzled expression. Cherry, you know I'm not supposed to share classified information. The council would kick my ass if I did. But I'm oh so curious. I can tell it's really stressing you out, sugar pie. It might be good to talk about it, even if it's in vague terms. I mean, anyway. Rubbing my temples, I thought about everything I had witnessed, everything I had endured, everything I kept bottled up for so long. Fine, but I can't say much. No matter how much or, to, or how little, I'm always here to listen. I'm looking for someone. Someone who did a lot of bad things. They planted a lot of false clues. A lot of things... Uh, a lot of things that were merely placed to waste my time, which it did. God, I'm a really worthless detective. Now, now, don't say that. You've got a brilliant mind inquiry. Thanks, Cherry. It's just... I think it must be related to some sort of group or organization. Everything feels so carefully planned out. Even the smallest things that can be thought of as, as a slip-up had been planned all along. It was as if they, you know, they, like, picked up a notebook and said, All according to Kekaku. There are quite a few underground groups of powerful witches. Those witches, they don't exactly follow the rules of the Council of Witches, you see. I took a long sip of my drink, my mind beginning to race anxiously with all of the possibilities. I see. The Everlasting was always well known for their attention to detail, so it won't be surprising. I didn't mention the Everlasting. The Everlasting is a gang of sorts, 
typically behind organized crime that often ends deadly. That group has been dodging the council witches for centuries. There isn't any way, right? Cherry, what do you know? You're very sus. Keeping my cool, I pretended not to hear her slip up and continue on with the conversation. Indeed. Oh shit, I might be able to get some information out of her if I play my cards right. Though honestly, I really didn't want to do any work right now. Here's the problem. A lemon witch recently has gone missing. Sources say she was relatively young too. She disappeared last week after an outing in this very town. It's been troublesome narrowing down a place, however. There's a chance Cherry Pie could have something to do with it. Ironic, two fruit witches evolve on opposite sides of a potentially deadly crime. Hmm, save the game, I guess. Well, do we say any grumpy customers lately, or do kids come here too often, you know? I mean, this is kind of on the nose, I feel like. Hmm. I guess... Uh, I don't know. Let's say... I don't know. Let's say if there's any grumpy customers lately. Oh, darling. You wouldn't believe it. Some people just don't know how to be polite. Hm. The other day, my little sis brought one of her school friends. Little sister? I didn't know Cherry had a little sister. More importantly, though, her sister may be the same age as the Lemon Witch. It could be possible that they know each other. I tried so hard to be nice, I really did, but this kid, she just has such a sour attitude. <laughs> sour, eh? I know what you mean. Kids these days really ought to lighten up more. Exactly, or at least don't give workers just doing their job a weird look and sass for no reason. Hmm. A kid with a sour attitude. Hmm. I see, so Deska. Um, well, did you do anything these past few weeks? I realize most of the time when we come in here, we mostly talk about me. What have you been up to? I was dodging the question. Uh, or actually, no. Oh, that's all oh, that we, I think we said that. I don't know why I, I don't know, because her expression changed. So I thought she was talking for some reason. I don't know. So I think Inquiry said like, yeah. You know, we've been talking about uh, me this entire time. What about you? Oh, that's silly. We talk about me plenty. Hmm. I really can't think of anything exciting. Ah, uh, I've been testing out this new recipe for a cherry brownie recently. Maybe next time you stop by, I could give you a bite. You'd be my little taste tester. Brownie, you say? Damn. I'd do anything to eat a cherry brownie right now. That sounds delicious. But that information didn't help me at all. All right. Hmm. Okay, so our, you know that was, that was like maybe the wrong choice. Uh, did you hear what the everlasting did yesterday? So that's that's I feel like calling out her slip up. You know how she knows about the everlasting. Well, what if I say you know what if I say the generic thing that the detective would say? You know, have you seen anything suspicious? Say, have you seen anything suspicious around this area, Cherry? Everything seems safe? Goodness me, are you worried about me? <laughs> Maybe I am. Well, now that you mention it, some people I used to come, uh, used to see, bleh, some people I used to see co uh, come by haven't been coming as, as much anymore. Coffee addicts missing their daily cup gets a concerning, but maybe I'm just overthinking it. <laughs> oh? Do you have any names for anyone you've concerned about? Not off the top of my head, no. But I'm sure it's just me being silly. No need to worry about that. Damn it. No matter what I do or say, it's just running me back into a corner again. Is something wrong, Sugar Pie? No, no. Don't worry about it, Cherry. Do you have any boxes or bags or something I can take this out in? Yeah, but you're leaving already? You didn't take a bite. Sorry, Cherry. I just... I got a lot on my mind right now. I'll see you again soon, though. Cherry packed away my pie slice, trying to force a smile. I felt bad, but there's no way I can keep a normal conversation right now. My mind is too clouded with work. Well, we'll do. See you later, Cherry. We'll do, wait. 
I don't know. I feel like I read something incorrectly. But anyway. She was acting a bit weird just now, wasn't she? It's probably just my inner paranoia. Alright, ending one, one six to go. Alright, so that was just kind of like... We were a little bit suspicious of her, but it didn't really lead anywhere. And then we left. Well, no, we just took that pie for takeout. Okay. Um, I think we had, we just gotta pick the right choices this time. I think. So let's say. Well, this one's. Mm, I'm not sure what this one would lead to. Let me see what this one does actually. Uh, are there any kids that come by lately? Kids? Where did this come from? Well, I just figured based on the place's cutesy appearance that it would attract more kids. Uh -huh, I think you would have known by now who likes coming here based on the amount of time you spend here now. To tell the truth, the only kid I see frequently enough to call regular here would be my little sister. Ah, I see. I didn't know you had a sister. Uh, my little Lottie. She's growing up awfully fast. I'll, I'll say for certain. I have to introduce you to. She would love you. I would love to meet the little lady. Okay. Well, what school is your sister in? Oh, she got accepted to the lottery for Incantation Academy not too long ago. Really now? Hm, that's funny. I live right by the, uh, I live right by that school. Really? Well, then maybe I should visit you before picking her up someday. I like that quite a lot, actually. Lemon goes to that school. There's too many coincidences. Oh, did you hear what the Everlasting did yesterday? Huh? What did they do? Some jackass claiming to be the Everlasting tried robbing one of the council members. This wasn't true at all, actually. I just wanted to see if Cherry would have any sort of strange reaction, like her, you know, her pupil shrinking. Call it a hunch, I suppose. Cherry, not failing to disappoint, looked like she was about to choke on her own drink. Really? You've got to be kidding. To do something like that. She took a deep breath in. Oh, that's just horrible. Awful. Uh, did anyone get hurt? Thankfully, no. They imprisoned the sucker behind it, though. Cherry looked like she was about to say something, but quickly closed her mouth. If I picked up on one thing about Cherry, is that she wasn't much for hesitating. Something here is obviously wrong. Just talking to Cherry like this felt like the world's most casual interrogation. I was finding out a lot of things. Things that added up. Things that made me have more questions. Luckily, I have the time necessary to get a little more information out of her. Sugar Pie, you haven't touched your slice yet. Is something the matter? Cherry looked concerned. Shit, I can't have her catch on to me. I laughed it off, telling her I just enjoyed her company so much I had forgotten to eat. Meanwhile, grabbing my fork to eat some good old pie. I took a bite, the cherry flavor filling my very senses. This doesn't taste like her normal pie. Did you try a new recipe out for your pies? <laughs> you can say that. I'm starting to feel strange, dizzy, discombobulated even. No, I was being get to grow drowsier and drowsier by that by the moment. You, you didn't. Well, who, who would have thought that the pie was poisoned? Uh, all right. <laughs> well, okay. Interesting implements. Uh, my head was pounding the second I regained consciousness. Before I could even try and get those old muscles to move. I realized I was tightly wrapped in some sort of rope. No, could these be vines? Ah, uh, there you are. Turning my head, I was greeted by the face of my captor. My instinct was to use defensive magic, a simple blast of energy to push her away from me. Yet the second I tried, nothing happened. Not even a speck of sparkles, dust, or any of that crap. You, what did you do to me? Oh, nothing serious, I promise. I just slipped something in your pie. The fellas have been working on a magic blocker. They say it's even stronger than the ones you council witches folk use. A pinch of that, a little bit of mild tranquilizers, and lots of sugars and cherries to hide it all. Mix it all up and ta-da! 
I have you right where I want you. I don't know if this choice matters, but, uh, what is this place? You're in a little teeny tiny room. I like to call the Slice and Dice Room. <laughs> okay. But don't worry, sweetie pie. There will, no, there will be no slicing nor dicing here today. Then why bring me here? Well, you are getting really close to solving your case, you see. My friends have been keeping tabs on you. They're going to take care of you themselves, but, well... I managed to convince them to have a little chat with you instead. To try and bring you to our side. What? You've always been my favorite customer inquiry. Being in my little friend group, it's a, necess a necessity for me. A life of chaos and torment of no end is just my fate in this world, I'm afraid. But you were always kind, always warm to me. Whenever you came in, uh, whenever you came in that life I once had paused. I was able to uh, be a normal witch, just a cute little owner flirting with a lovely lady, making pies, making people smile. With you, I finally feel I like I can live the life of my dreams. I can't wait for you to come by only on your breaks anymore. I want you to be able to call this place your home. I want to be able to call myself your wife one day. I'll make you coffee every morning, just the way you like it. I'll give you kisses every night. <laughs> okay. Together, we can be the perfect, picturesque couple Living a happy, normal life. Yes, very normal, by the way. In this bloody basement. <laughs> That's all I want. Do you tie up and drug everyone you ask out on dates, Cherry Pie? <laughs> no, you're the first. The only. My one and only. This girl has absolutely lost her mind. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm flattered, but... But, there was a look of fear in her eyes before I could even finish my sentence. Her eye began twitching as I took my next breath. I really should be careful of my words here. I'm sure you're wonderful, but your workplace and my workplace, it just clashes a lot, you know? <laughs> look, just let me out of here and we can chat about this more. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find they don't clash as much as you think. For an organization that claims to care so much about life, nothing was really done until your little event to which friend went missing, hmm? What about the spider witch? The lily pad witch? No one cared when they disappeared. Not one of you was sent out to look for them. The council witches only cares about those with specialties they deem important. If you find others along the way, it's just bonus points. You're all just as indifferent to the death of others as I am. <laughs> A ringing noise could be heard from the other room. Ah, another customer is here. I'll be back shortly, okay, my darling? You'll have more time to think it all over. Cherry Pie skipped out the door. A clicking noise behind her indicated that she locked it shut. Using the opportunity placed in front of me, I started to try and bend and break the vines holding my wrists captive. Twisting them off was a struggle, I'll admit, but nothing I haven't dealt with before. Once my hands were freed, my next move was to cut the rest of the vines off using the knife in my... Ah, damn it. Cherry took all of my belongings out of my pockets. My communicator was in there along with my other tools. So much for being able to call for help. I have to find out where she put them before I'm able to make my escape. Awkwardly wiggling out the rest of the vines, I was able to get a better look at the room. It truly was an eerie sight. There must be something in here that could help me unlock the door. Okay, turns out it's a point-and-click adventure game now. Take a look at that. A bloody pie-themed circular saw. Yikes. Yikes is right. Let me just save the game. The most eye-catching thing in this room by far had to be the operating table. The disgusting mess of blood smeared over proved to show how sloppy Cherry was with her work. So it's true, all of those witches really did die by Cherry's hands. I doubt they went peacefully. Poor souls. Damn it. It's locked tight. In, in every case I've seen involving the everlasting, there was always some sort of strange puzzle in these sorts of hidden rooms. <laughs> you know, I li apparently that's just what you do, you know? When you're a detective, you just you gotta solve puzzles. Video game puzzles in particular. 
Apparently, according to my sources, they have had a bad habit of accidentally locking each other in. Damn idiots. Regardless, if Cherry isn't everlasting, then there must be one of those puzzles in here that can unlock the door from the inside. Who knew, like, ex escape room puzzle solving is like a prerequisite? Prerequisite? I can't, I can't speak. Prerequisite for being a detective. Um, there has to be something in here that can help me escape. Rubbing through the tools and cleaning products, I found what looked to be a pole arm at the bottom of the box. Or pole arm? <laughs> like, it's a halberd! No, uh, no, it's a pale arm, not a pole arm. I found what looked like to be a pale arm at the bottom of the box. Once I managed to drag the arm out of the box, it was clear to see the arm was fake. Plastic. Most likely some sort of mannequin prop. I've seen one of these before. They're magic cooling shells. Cherry must be using them to keep the body parts cold. She cleaned off the blood. I wonder why. Curious, I step closer to observe the dismembered being. It's a doll. Why have such a gruesome doll in a cooling shell? Hmm, strange. So these are just mannequins. Weird. On this. The giant chest in the room caught my eye. I'm not sure what could be in here, but it's worth a shot checking. Some sort of leg or legs. Neatly dressed life sized doll legs. Interesting. Alright. It's more doll parts for some reason. Oh, okay, this is new. Actually, okay, I have to click on this and then on that. I have a doll arm, a pair of doll legs. Maybe something will happen if I put them back in place. Okay. You have a choice, apparently. I don't know if it matters. Also, how do I scroll down, by the way? Is there no scroll? It looks like you can scroll, but, like, you can't, actually. I'm trying to scroll my mouse wheel. Does it look like you can actually scroll? That no, was weird. I'll just save there, I guess. Uh, put them in. Upon placing the doll limbs in their correct places, a strange noise rang through the room. Simple enough, I suppose. With quick sift movements, I unlock the door. The sooner I get out of here, the better. Exiting that nightmare of a room, I immediately stumbled into a kitchen of sorts. This must be where Cherry Pie makes her pies and her other assorted baked goods. The eerie signs of the room contributed to the atmosphere of impending doom. But listening closer, I realized it wasn't entirely silence. I heard faint, feminine crying sounds coming from somewhere within this room. It almost sounds like a child. Hmm, okay. Um, I'll save the. Yeah, I guess we'll save the game here. I wish I wish there more save slots. I don't know why you can't scroll. So you would think this is a scroll bar, right? But there's no thing to scroll. <laughs> no. Um. Well, you know, let's just focus on escaping. You know, the, there's some crying. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll just leave. No thanks. My top priority should be finding my communicator. Anyone else trapped in here will get rescued too. Walking through a door leading out of the kitchen, I found myself in what looked like a cherry-themed waiting room. Odd. What on earth would you need a waiting room for? I couldn't get the sound of crying out of my ears. Even though I was far away from here, or I was far away from where I first heard it, I felt guilty. Did I really do the right thing? Is what I'm doing right? It echoed my brain, getting louder and louder. Gripping my pointed ears, I desperately tried to get the noises out of my head. Just, just stop it. I'm doing everything I can. My feet stumbled over themselves amidst my panic, however. I was able to quickly catch myself on the cherry-themed lamp. Click. The lamp made a noise. Despite my fear that I broke it, rumbling sounds coming from the wall made me aware that the lamp was designed to be a switch. I was met with a hole in the wall where the painting once stood. Normally I would use my magic to detect any traps or triggers, but seeing as I don't have any of that right now. Hesitantly, I crawled through the tight space. I vented. I paused my crawl for a moment, hearing peculiar noises from the other side of the wall. 
sloshing, chewy, animalistic-like noises tearing into something. Oh, how I miss this high. <laughs> Cherry pie. <laughs> I know I shouldn't, but maybe just a few more bites. It'll make the feeling last longer. Flesh. Blood. The smell was so strong. It filled my senses even from all the way back here. I feel so refreshed. So perfect. Bless the beginners for reguri- uh, re -figu I can't speak. Bless the beginners for revigorating my soul. Beginners. Bless the beginners. Chera wasn't eating a meat pie. She was consuming a witch whole, nucleus and all, from the sounds of it. Laughter reverberated through the entire building. Oh my, what a mess. I have to clean all this up before I see my beloved again. I wouldn't want to scare her. <laughs> okay. Nom nom nom. It's a bit too late for that, buddy. Silence. Cherry must have left to clean herself up. With that, I continued crawling my way through, feeling more uneasy than before. A secret room with a lone file cabinet in the middle. There could be useful information in here. I have to look through. Uh, have to look through it. Rummaging through the file cabinet, I found some peculiar notes. Okay. From the beginning, there were seven witches. It, it's lore. Amazing. Okay, so this is the read here. So from the beginning, there were seven witches. The witches of fire, water, land, artisans, war, mine, and heart. The power, the power of heart. Uh, these witches were called the beginners. The beginners held immense magical power and paved the way for all witch kind to flourish. They eventually formed into a group that called themselves the Council of Witches. They were able to slip parts, uh, split off parts of themselves in order to create new wishes, and thus the sharing of magical energy became known. Even when the beginners expired one by one, the Council of Witches continued forth in their honor. Their energy still lives on within all of us, after all, in the form of our nucleus. The magical nucleus is the most powerful part of a witch. Harvesting these nuclei and adding it to our own is a direct guarantee to everlasting life. So long as we keep harvesting, we will be everlasting. Hmm. Okay, so that's why they're called the everlasting. It's in the pursuit of immortality, I guess. There's so much more in here, but I should be getting the hell out of here. What am I doing? What should I do? Hmm. Guess we'll save here. Well, I am curious. Let's read more. There might be something important here. More secret base locations, dangerous plans we could stop. I have to keep digging. I pulled out another page from the cabinet. Report 16X. The council may be having another competition to choose, mem uh, choose new members in the next few cycles. The representatives of the land and the mine are growing old. Perfect for harvesting. If you can arrange such a feat. Everlaster Cherry Pie suggested recruiting the Mind Division Investigator Inquiry into her ranks, or allowing her to attempt communication within the controlled environment. If successful, we just may be able to use her to harvest the land and mine representatives' nuclei. Nuclei? Nuclei? This, this was bad. An assassination attempt on one of the council members. I frankly dug through the drawer once more. Top secret. If you're reading this, that means you're a member of our preparation committee. It is imperative that this document not leave your eyes. Our scientific specialists in the everlasting have found substances within the witch's nuclei to be heavily addictive was ingested. You must take caution to not let the others know until we can find a way to counterbalance its urges. If they find out, it might cause an uproar. This being said, be careful to monitor your own intake. Member Cherry Pie's pie slices have been the easiest cover to both prevent suspicion and keep daily intake to a minimum. Suggest anyone who seems to be displaying erratic behavior only one pie slice a day until the urges subside. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, she has been cooking witches. She has been cooking people. 
into the pies. Though it seems like she, you know, she's been she's been getting high off her own supply. By the way, the number one rule you're not supposed to do. It just keeps getting worse. If the everlasting is growing this powerful, the very magical balance of our universe could be at stake. We're already on the brink of a magical energy crisis. You know, the the magic economy is in a recession. They're, they're, they're taking in too much off for yourself is destined to doom the balance of our world. Of course, those bastards wouldn't know that. That explains Cherry's erratic behavior. All she cares about is getting her next fix. She's not entirely there. Ugh, my head. The second I grew conscious, I felt a sharp pain near my knees. My mind was foggy. My limbs felt more numb than ever before. Also, very old-fashioned, by the way, to put all those secret documents in the, a cabinet. You know, instead of like a computer or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, um... What's going on? What happened to me? Muffled feminine laughter echoed in my ears. Splotches of reds and browns came into my vision. These muddled colors soon took form to create a deranged young woman hovering over me. I jolted back, or at least I tried to. My arms seemed to be restrained by something. Good morning, sleepyhead. Or well, good afternoon. <laughs> My speech slurred as I tried to scream out, only to be muffled by a blood-soaked hand. Now, now, screaming won't work, so don't even try it. You really broke my heart there, sugar pie. Why did you run away like that and snoop through my things? I thought you'd love me too. Was I too scary, too forward? I wanted to do this right. <laughs> what am I saying? You can't talk right now, silly me. There's no use fretting over the past anyhow. All I can do is try to protect our future together. I was speaking of protecting your future. You may notice your lack of legs. <laughs> okay. I struggled my, to move my head up from what I now realize was a sort of operating table. Looking down confirmed Cherry's words. I was unhappily greeted by a set of legless nubs wrapped in crimson stained gauze. All I could utter out in my sedated state was groans and mumbles of discomfort. <laughs> there was a movie about this, by the way. I mean, one of the classic, like... I guess, obsessed stalker, you know, kidnaps you and like, you know, imprisons you in their house or whatever. What was it called? I forgot the name, but you know, it was about, I think it was about an author, you know, got trapped by like, uh, their obsessive fan, right? That's pretty infamous. But anyway, uh, my legs, God damn it! I'm gonna get out of this now. Is there any way out of this? Hey now, sugar pie, there's no need to fret. If you're like this, I can protect you more. The Everlasting wanted to kill you, but I'm saving you, like how you saved me. Oh, how poetic. If you ran away, you would've been dead for sure, and we just can't have that. Besides, it's not like your legs will go to waste. You know, I'm gonna eat them, num num num. Go to... ways. No, she couldn't mean. It'll be the most delicious addition to a pie ever created. I wanted this to be special. You had to become one with me at long last. It's a dream come true. Okay, you know? I've heard of, I've heard <laughs> I've heard people wanting to eat someone, but like it was usually used in a different context. But anyway, um This meat, it's so special. Normally I use my slicer and dicer for this for the dismemberment, but I want to save the moment as much as possible, so I use a bone saw instead. Oh yes, how romantic. Shoot, I may cut off your, your hands while I'm at it. <laughs> that way you won't go snooping around again. Decisions, decisions. How's a girl to choose? My darling. You're going to be delicious. Cannibal addict. Great. You know? I guess witches are just delicious. Okay, uh, what happens if we just, we, why don't we just focus on escaping, you know, uh, we should just leave. We should really just leave. I mean, we don't have time for this. I didn't stop back there, so I shouldn't stop now. Not of the state I'm currently in, anyways. Once help arrives, I'll be able to do a much more thorough investigation of this area. Not seeing an exit, I slowly crawl back the way I came. Oh, Cherry. 
Ouch, my head. Why is it always the head? It's... Well, opening my eyes, I saw a familiar, unpleasant sight. Not here again. Terra must have knocked me out back there and dragged me back. Oh, darling. Terra called out for me in her sickingly sweet voice. I tried to open my mouth to respond, but... Terry seemed to have plans that involved me not speaking. It's just you and me, Inquiry. Since you were so adamant on escaping, I wanted to make sure this time you would listen to me. I love you, Inquiry. I'm trying to save your life. Whether you like it or not, this is the best outcome for you. The everlasting may seem bad, but I promise you, there are things about the Council you don't know. Muffling groans of protests were all I could say to show my disdain. There are things out there they haven't even told you. Things we spent countless cycles trying to dig up. This goes so, so much deeper than you thought. You know, I would maybe trust you, this whole conspiracy stuff, if it weren't the fact they were eating people. You know, Cherry? It's not just a cute girl called a wacko like you think. It's not your typical Yandere visual novel. I'm truly apologetic for getting so carried away. This is life and death here. I have a family to protect. I'm trying to protect you too. I know if you question the things they've done before, Inquiry. The things they've made you do. You're a good person with a kind heart. How, how long have you followed them blindly? Haven't you ever wondered if you're really, really on the right side? To tell the truth, I understand that feeling all too well. But when the time comes, we'll all have a choice to make. What will you choose? Okay. Confusion. This is just confusion. I am confused. I guess I'm simply confused. That's all. Alright. So what if we investigate this person who is crying, actually? If someone is trapped in here, I have to help them. The crying. It's coming from inside the oven. Which looks like a prison to me, rather. <laughs> well, a cage. Hello? Is someone in there? Do you need help? I heard a shaking voice speak back to me. Please, let me out of here. I'm scared. Damn it. There's some sort of lock in this oven. Don't worry, miss. I'll get you out of there. Thank you. That poor thing. I better find the key to this fast. It must be somewhere in this room. Hmm, where could it be? Uh, cookbook? Is it in the cookbook? It's a cookbook of a variety of enchanted desserts. Looks like Cherry wrote in most of the recipes herself. The further I looked into the cook cookbook, the more morbid the recipes became. I decided to close them. Mm -hmm. A teaspoon of eyeballs, a two tablespoons of, you know, lungs, a piece of a kidney, you know, um, that looks so good. Damn, I'm hungry, but I don't exactly trust any food in this place anymore, either. Uh... Cabinet? I opened the cabinet, but all I was met with were an array of pots, pans, and other miscellaneous kitchenware. Even digging deeper into the very back, I found nothing of use. There's something glistening inside of the vent. I awkwardly crawled up on top of the countertop in order to try and get a better peek. B E A K uh, A K by the way, that's a typo. I feel like uh, it looked like a metal key ring of a key attached to it. This could be what I need to get that kid out of there, but it's just out of reach. Hmm. Looking at the apron hung up neatly, I could sense something strange about it. I picked up the white cloth and expected it closer, noticing that it was heavier than I thought. Hmm. I dug through the pockets, finding an odd magnet of sorts. Magnet? How do they work? <laughs> uh, strangely, or strange, why would there be a magnet in here? Well, it's convenient because we can use it here. <laughs> but, you know. Magnet in hand, I crawled awkwardly on top of the kitchen counter. Once placed nearby the vents, I heard the metallic slide of the key ring dragging the keys closer towards me. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just, actually, maybe it's the way she normally gets the key. <laughs> you know, it's a roundabout way, I guess, to like keep the key hidden normally, I guess. Uh, nice. I got the keys. I got the keys. Open up. 
Opening up the oven, I saw what I feared. A small witch shoved inside, crying her tiny eyes out. I reached a hand out to her, which she hesitantly took, and pulled her out of the oven. Oh, hey, it's her. You know, so in a way, this is a bit of a prequel, you know, to uh, Barry Witch. But anyway, thank you. She appeared nervous, which isn't surprising. She looked incredibly young. Besides, being in this situation would have anyone fearful and wary. But now that I think about it, I recall Cherry mentioning having a sister around her age. This couldn't be her, could it? You're welcome. Do you have a name? Um, my name is Strawberry. I just got it. Hmm. Witches weren't always born to the names they currently use. Often, when a witch gains their specialty, they change their name to match it. It's not always the case a witch will change their name, but it is the most common thing nowadays. Hmm. A strawberry witch, I see. Uh, congratulations on getting such a sweet specialty. It's nice to meet you, Strawberry. My name is Inquiry. I'm with the Council of Witches. How did you get down here? M my sister? Uh, is Cherry Pie your sister? Yeah, she's my big sister. I am not actually supposed to be here. I remember hearing strange noises from upstairs. Sister told me never to go down here, but I thought she was struggling or something. I only wanted to help, so I went down and found her in the kitchen. Uh, oh, this is a flashback, you know, flashback cherry pie to differentiate between present cherry pie, who if they if she appeared now, she would just murder us. Uh, Strawberry? Cherry? What's happening? I told you not to come down here, sweetie. Go back upstairs, okay? I'm in the middle of something very important. <laughs> very important. Cherry. Cherry didn't seem like herself. Sure, she was saying nice things, but she looked so scary, I just froze. She's all twitchy. Twitchy and giggly, and I don't know how to explain it. It's time to go upstairs now. I have important business to attend to. These pies don't bake themselves, do they? But you smell like blood. Are you hurt? Strawberry, upstairs. But I don't get it. Why do you smell like blood if you're not hurt? She laughed a creepy laugh that I'd never heard before. It was so scary. And then she grabbed me and whispered. People like us were meant to be eaten, Strawberry. I'm simply rearranging that circle of life. Wait, I'm sorry. I'll go back upstairs. This day is too important to me. <laughs> That's when she locked me in the oven. You know, it's... It's, um... I don't know, poetic, I guess? Maybe not poetic. But anyway, it reminds me of, you know, the original game. Anyway. Uh, please let me out. I just wanted to help. I don't like it in here. <laughs> I promise all will make sense soon, Strawberry. I kept crying for help, but nothing happened. Until you help me. This poor girl. Cherry really has lost her mind. She's no longer aware of the severity of her actions. I need to get this child to safely, or safety as quickly as possible. Thank goodness the oven was off. I see. You're awfully brave, Strawberry. There's no need to worry anymore, alright? I'll get you out of here and make sure you're safe. I gave her a warm smile and extended my hand in hopes to cheer up Strawberry. Okay, thank you very much, miss. She's, she squeezed onto my hand. Taking a deep breath in, I decide to move onwards to the next room. My communicator must be here somewhere. Walking through the door leading out of the kitchen, we found ourselves in what looked like a cherry-themed waiting room. Oh, is that cherry lemonade? Strawberry's eyes lit with an excitement as she rushed towards the drink dispenser. It's just strawberry, wait. We don't know for sure what's in that. It could be poisoned. I put a hand on her shoulder which seemed to stop the girl from getting a drink. It was a sad sight to see the child frowning up at me, but better safe than sorry. Suspicion grew in my mind as my eyes scanned the room. It was more pleasing to the eye compared to the last two rooms I've encountered. I highly doubt this room is that innocent, though. If you use your investigation skills to see if the lemonade is safe, can you let me know, Miss Inquiry? I'm thirsty. 
Investigation skills. <laughs> if only my magic actually worked right now, we would have been out of here already. How about after we get out of here? I'll get you a big glass of whatever drink you would like, alright? You just gotta hang in there a little while longer. Really? Do you mean a miss inquiry? Mm -hmm, of course I do. Unless, of course, you don't want anything. I want something, and I want a big glass of lemonade. Or a milkshake with whipped cream and sprinkles. Maybe Cherry will want. Strawberry stopped talking mid sentence. A tense silence filled the air. Miss Inquiry, what's gonna happen to Cherry? Is she gonna be okay? My heart sank. I do feel bad for this girl. She's going through so much all at once. She's gonna be okay, kiddo. There's no, no need to worry. Why was she acting so weird? I don't know. But I promise you will do our best to figure out why. Okay. Just as fast as it darkened, her mood and demeanor brightened up again. What a strange little girl. Keeping close eye on Strawberry, I began to search the room myself. Alright, so we get to investigate this room this time. Magic mirror on the wall, who's the cutest of them all? Strawberry seems to be distracted by the mirror. I'll leave her be for now and investigate it after. Round. A cherry themed clock is ticking melodically. If we were in the situation, I think it was charming. A beautiful painting of someone holding a cherry. I tried taking it off the wall, but the damn thing wouldn't budge. Guess nothing useful here. What's that? Oh, oh, I've always wanted to read this book. Really now? What's it about? It's about a wolf and a bunny who fall in love. This is a reference to the developer's other game. Uh, what was it called? I, uh, what was it called again? Let me look it up. I, I'm really bad with my memory. Uh, it was called Little, Med, uh, Little Red Memories. Little Red Memories. I play that too, you know? So you can check it out on my channel if you'd like to. Anyway, um... Yeah, it's about a wolf and a bunny who fall in love. I read the first few pages in my school's library. The book itself doesn't seem suspicious. Maybe it was supposed to be a gift for Strawberry that Cherry hadn't given yet. Okay. Hmm. I approached the door of caution to see if it was unlocked. The second my hand touched the knob, however, I heard a familiar sound coming from the mirror. Oh. <laughs> mirror, Cherry Pie. Howdy! Huh? Cherry? This is a pre-mirrored message that goes off when an unauthorized person is sent in this room. Oh, it's a it's a pre-mirrored message. That's funny. Silly little meat pie, you're not supposed to escape. Meat pie. In the off chance that so you're authorized and this is triggered by mistake. Whoopsies. If you know me well, count all the things you love about me. <laughs> To the little meat pie, don't worry now. You're gonna be part of the everlasting. Uh, suddenly, two large metallic arms arose from the hole where the mirror once was. They snatched Strawberry. Shit, this is bad. Hey, let go of me, please. I don't want to be a meat pie. Strawberry, hang on. I'm gonna get you out of there. Help, please. The metal arms were squeezing Strawberry tighter and tighter. This is bad. I need to find a way to disable the trap and fast. What was it that Cherry said at the end? That has to be a clue for the other Everlasting members. Uh... 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 I have to do something, say something! Cherry's clue. It may be the only chance I have at saving Strawberry. Uh... I showed you desperation, you know? But, well... A loud, deafening crunch rang through my ears. Strawberry? No! I failed. I couldn't save her. A child died and it was all my fault. She didn't deserve this, she was so young! Why did it have to be her? It's all my fault. Ending two! Strawberry pie. I wonder how Cherry feels about this. Oh well. She knows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19.
It's 19. Oh, okay. There you go. It's 19. Um, so yeah, the, the clue was, you know, count how, like, count how much, or count all the things that you love about her, or whatever. And each cherry counts as one pair, I guess. You know, that, that wasn't very clear to me. I, I was counting, like, each, you know, berry. But it's actually each cherry, each pair of cherry. And you also need to count, um, all the little icons that you see, which kind of doesn't make sense to be honest, because technically, if this was 3D, you know, if for example, if you turn the little like toilet paper box, wouldn't there be other symbols <laughs> behind it? I don't know. Anyway, but basically, yeah, you just need to count like how many little like cherry icons are in in the room. Anyway, apparently this plushie doesn't count. By the way, you know, I, I, mean, I thought we gotta count this. You know, this little thing in the corner. Anyway. But yeah, okay, we got it. Uh, a warning sound echoed before the mechanism released Strawberry, dropping her onto the ground. The poor kid coughed and wheezed. She was practically almost crushed. Strawberry, you okay, kiddo? I spoke, kneeling down beside her. She didn't seem to have any major injuries, when I could tell. Meat pies. Were they all... The realization seemed to finally dawn on a strawberry, causing tears to well up in her eyes. Cherry. Cherry made some of those pies special for me. Did I eat a witch? Mm, so that's how she acquired a taste for people. Anyway, um, she covered her mouth, looking beyond horrified. As much as I want to help Strawberry, it's too dangerous to stay in this room. We've already been here for far too long for my liking. What matters the most right now is finding a way to get out of here and get help. Uh, can you stand? I think so. Strawberry wobbled to her feet. She looked off balance. It would be bad if she fell somewhere and got even more hurt. Do you want me to carry you? Yes, please. Alright, kiddo. Hop on my back. The little one climbed onto her back, clinging her arms around my neck. Aside not to comment on how she was nearly choking me, I stood up and made my way through now the unlocked door. A long hallway greeted us. The other side was illuminated with light. To our right, there was a dark corridor that seemed to lead to another room. I was inclined to head towards the bright light, thinking it might be the way out, until I heard a familiar haunting laugh come from that very same direction. Silently moving towards the other hallway was our only choice, one that I wasn't very fond of. Entering the new room, I noticed the amount of closets, cabinets, and other places to store belongings. I maneuvered my way quietly through the storage room, one arm holding up strawberry, and the other searching through the endless drawers, boxes, and cabinets. Aha! Uh -huh. I found my communicator. I turned my head to tell the pink-haired child the news, but notice a heartbreaking frown on her face. You okay, kiddo? I just... I don't get it. Last week, me and Cherry were celebrating my specialty day, but now she's... Strawberry pointed her little finger towards the wall. There I noticed a photograph of two witches side by side, pinned with pride. Lottie got her specialty! Yeah, that was her, yeah, I, well, yeah, I, was, I was reminded, yeah. I think that's her, like, name before. Got her witch name, I guess. It was bittersweet. Truth be told, I've actually been able to like Cherry Pie myself. She's hardworking, caring, and a lovely conversationalist. This change in her. It truly did feel uncharacteristic. Seeing this photo now puzzled me more than ever. No matter how hard I try to stay focused on the task at hand, I just... Can't believe any of what's happening. It doesn't feel right. I was quickly snapped out of my thoughts when I heard the rat-a-tat noises made by Cherry's shoes, skipping delightedly too close towards us. My first instinct was to hide, but there was barely in any good spots in this room. I have to make sure Strawberry is safe too. I can't predict what Cherry might do at the moment. Hmm. Well, let me save the game, I guess. Um, I guess I'll save it... Uh, I guess I'll save it. 
do we hide both or do we hide only strawberry? Um, well, let's try to hide together, maybe? I don't know if it's a good idea, let's try anyway. <laughs> Me and Strawberry crammed together, hiding as quietly as we could inside the closet. It was the only option I could think of in such a little time. Ah, okay. Inquiry? What are you doing in my sister? The cherry witch grabbed the collar of my shirt, yanking me out of our hiding place. You, get away from me, you disgusting pervert. Well, now you call me a pervert? Pervert? No, Cherry. Before I could explain my piece, Cherry could her scolding in my face. I thought I knew you. I thought you were nice. We were hiding from you. I can't let you hurt a child, Cherry. Cherry? Strawberry peeked her head out of the closet, who was Cherry Pie immediately hopped in front of her in a defensive position. Hurt a child? Hurt my sister? Everything I've done is for her, to protect her. I can't let her grow up alone with no help like I had to. Our parents, they used up all of their magic to keep us alive, Inquiry. They gave up everything, for us. All I had was my sister. I would do anything to keep her from harm. Even that means I have to kill you too. Wait. Ow. Cherry didn't hesitate in the slightest. Before I knew it, thorny vines were trapping my very form. With one suffocating painful crunch, I left or I felt the life drain from my body. Sisterly love. <laughs> you know, apparently we're just playing hide and seek, Cherry. You know, why are you calling me a pervert? That's 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 it's quite the assumption, <laughs> you know, anyway. Um, okay, so I guess we can't both fit into the closet. I guess we'll just hide Strawberry herself instead. I adjusted my grip on Strawberry, hoisting her up into a nearby empty cupboard overhead. Oh, cupboard instead. Miss Inquiry. Without hesitation, I handed my communicator over to Strawberry. I lifted the finger up to the girl's gestures to we need to be quiet. Carefully, I whisper up at her. Okay, kiddo. I got a favor to ask of you. I know this is really scary, and I promise it'll be over really soon. Cherry is gonna come in here, and it might be taken away. Once it's safe and she's far away from this room, you press the top red button on that thing I gave you, alright? It'll track your location and call my buddies to the council for help. Do you understand? Strawberry shakily nodded, trying to hold back tears. Hey, kiddo. I promise. Everything's gonna be alright. I tried to put a calm and comforting face on for Strawberry as I closed the cupboard doors. Truth be told, I... I don't have time to think of a plan. Cherry's gonna be here any minute and... Speak of the devil. Oh, here we go again. What do I do? What do I do with you? I love you, but you try to escape. But I love you, but... Slowly gaining consciousness in the room, I now dread more than ever. I saw an erratic cherry with which mumbling to herself in front of me. Of course, I was tied up with many, many vines. Too many vines, if I'm being frank. Why did you do it? I'm trying to help you. Why would you just listen to me? I stayed silent, still mentally processing the last however long I've been here. Ugh, I don't feel good. Cherry knelt over, looking as if she were about to puke. You okay? Yeah, I... This happens sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> not to worry, my love. I've made sure to lock up the shop. Nothing can interrupt us now. I promise, my darling. I won't let you out of my sight ever again. A crash was heard behind Cherry. Flashing lights glared in my eyes. Voices I recognized called up my name. FBI, open up. She did it. She did it. There was so much chaos of spells firing back and forth. It smelled like a mix of ice and burnt ash all at once. Very unpleasant. Get your hands off of me. I heard Cherry scream. I looked up to her to see her struggling to fight a beam of light that captured her form completely. 
It didn't take long after that for my buddies to pry me out of those vines and bring me out of that nightmare. I should be happy. I escaped, right? I caught a member of the Everlasting, and there's probably more information down there that could help the Council of Witches. But honestly, I'm just so tired. Every time I look for answers, I'm either running a wild goose chase or severely scarred by what I find. I'm tired. I just want to go to a cafe and enjoy a nice slice of pie. I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't ask for this. Strawberry. Wait, you can't take me away. I heard Cherry Pie's protest is that she was escorted out of the hidden part of the building. I have a sister I need to take care of. Please, you can't do this. Well, you know, what about all the other witches you ate? You know, those witches might have had family. Yeah, anyway. Strawberry. Sweetheart, there you are. You know I would never hurt you, right? Right? Strawberry silently cowered behind me, clinging under the back of my sleeve. Strawberry? My heart ached for Cherry, truthfully. I still can't wrap my head around that girl. My head also ached from, well, everything. You're being hit in the head like two times. But nothing could compare to the hurt I felt when I looked back at the little girl. Actually, did we get hit in the head? I mean, in the bad endings, we did get hit in the head multiple times. I guess we only got hit in the head like one time, technically. This uh, run. You know, in this timeline, you know. Uh, she looked at me with the saddest expression as two of my buddies took her aside to talk of her. Kiddo. She really is a sweet gal. She's going to be all alone now, isn't she? Huh? Receptionist? Um, Alright, Miss Inquiry, thank you so much for signing all the paperwork in such a timely manner. I'll be sure to bring it out right away. I thank the receptionist, wiping my sweaty hands off on, on my pants the second she turned around. At first, I was uncertain if I should do this. I mean, I've never dealt too much with kids before. But then when I saw that kid walk into the room safe in one piece, it finally clicked in my brain. The relief, the joy. Miss Inquiry, what are you doing here? I believe I owe someone a tall glass of lemonade, don't I? Her smile lit up the room. I couldn't help but want to protect it. Was that really so bad? We must protect that smile. If being a parent means wanting to protect a kid more than anything in this world, I don't think I'll do too shabby. <laughs> Strawberry ran towards me while she realized I was here for a fun reason. Wrapping her arms around me, I leaned down lower to give the kid a big, friendly squeeze. Yay! Miss Inquiry, Miss Inquiry, I did it! I pushed the button like you said! And I snitched on my, you know, criminal sister! <sighs> you did good, kid. I'm so proud of you. You had to do with a lot of hard stuff lately, but rest assured, I'll be watching over you now. Wait, does this mean... Yep, kiddo, as of two minutes ago, you're officially my kiddo. I ruffled her hair playfully, and her laughter filled the very air. Or as her laughter. Yay, does that mean I get to live with you, Miss Inquiry? Yep, you're still stuck with me, unless you don't want to go with me, that is. No, no, I want to go with you. I want lemonade. I knew the reality of what this girl went through hasn't completely hit her yet. I knew when it did, it would hit hard. She doesn't deserve to be alone through all of this, you know. I, I want to be there to support her. Having that realization, I just felt like this was right. Hand in hand, I decided right then that no matter what, no matter where she goes or who she wants to be, I would always love my little berry witch. Ending 6. True ending. There you go. I guess that's her backstory. And we learn more about the the witch world, I guess, a little bit. You know, the freaking council of witches and like the everlasting or whatever. Hmm. Makes me wonder because there is there was the implication that apparently the council of witches isn't you know all like nice as it appears to be. Hmm. Maybe that's why, because you know, we don't really expand on that, I guess, but this does lead into developer's original game, Berry Witch, and Strawberry seems to be alone, you know, in in her game. And we don't see any mention, as far as I remember anyway. Maybe there was a mention, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how old uh, the, the detective is, how old Acre is. She seemed pretty old, but, you know, she's not like 
like so old <laughs> that she'll pass away so so quickly but i don't know I, I maybe she did pass away you know maybe she was i mean witches i don't know i don't know how old the witches again are but maybe um maybe strawberry was left alone because inquiry died of natural causes she passed away she was a little old maybe i don't know or maybe not i'm not sure it could also be the case of like you know kind of like a retcon where like um obviously inquiry didn't exist you know back then when the developer was writing that story i'm not sure i'm just wondering about her circumstances you know how did like strawberry end up in that situation where she was by herself in the forest she was given an assignment right i'm assuming that assignment you know like, kind of like again retroactively was from the council of witches maybe and she was assigned something like that and that was her thing you know and everything because that's what i remember right because she was assigned there um in particular to do something right and that was her mission and you know she felt kind of depressed about it because you know, spoilers people kept going into the forest to kill themselves so like you know she kept failing at her mission um anyway uh and also you know it's funny how she actually uh, what, what's that saying you know how like the the apple doesn't far fall from the tree or something like that seems like she um you know took up her sister's like um murderous tendencies but anyway um but yeah anyway yeah I'm, I'm there's a lot of questions that start being raised you know like again we learn a, lot, a little bit more about uh her backstory and about the lore of the world but that brings even more questions you know what happened to inquiry and like, did she get involved and in, i don't know anyway it was interesting you know interesting little story um and like it, it's it's cool that was being told from a different perspective as well you know so we don't literally just follow strawberry um the entire time but she was more like in a kind of like a side character but we know you know uh that uh, she's an important character because we know her from another game and everything um i wonder how she feels about her sister though in the future you know like when she's grown up and everything does she still visit you know her, her like sister in prison i don't know i'm assuming she's like cherries in prison i don't know um anyway but yeah i mean yeah, you know overall i do i did enjoy the the game again it's definitely an interesting insight into the, the same universe and everything um, you know, very, very, uh, classic Yandere story, I guess. Freaking, like, crazy, crazy anime woman. Freaking tries to, like, you know, murder you. Um, though she doesn't actively try to murder you, unless she's given a reason, I guess. But, uh, mostly it's just, she just wants to protect you, that's all, right? And that involves cutting off her legs, don't worry about it. Um... But yeah, I mean, you know, the the art looks looks good. Um, mostly the character art, though, I think looks nice. Uh, the background art, I mean, it looks okay. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, I would say though, I think the UI um, needs a bit of work. I feel like um, it's not bad. It's just a little rough, you know. It could be better. That's all. That's all I'm saying. You know, it could be a little bit better. You know, for example, the save menu looks a little bit weird. You know, why is there like a scroll? You know, even though you can't scroll. Uh, the font, you know, could be a little bit bigger, in my opinion. Could be a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit different, you know. It's using the little, like, it looks like Comic Sans, to be honest. <laughs> so it looks a little silly, to me anyway. But, you know, that's very subjective and just personal opinion, really. Um, but I feel like maybe, like, a more readable font would be better just for, like, dialogue and stuff. And you could change it up, you know. I don't know, I don't know if they did that, but, like, you know, if you really want to have this silly font or whatever, you could change it up, you know. And it could work in some ways, you know. That's kind of the point where sometimes um the characters all act all nice and innocent you know but you can like, change it up make it a more scary font when she's actually speaking in a more threatening way or whatever when a character is speaking in a more threatening way but anyway um yeah um anything else i guess i say i mean a lot of them you know i got all the endings i assume it seems like you got six out of six you know i like all the unique endings uh, definitely kind of morbid as well when you think about it, you know. I'm just looking back at some of the endings. I mean, especially the one where the freaking kid dies, you know. <laughs> it's freaking, like, very dark. Um, but yeah, definitely scary in a sense. At least in the more gruesome endings anyway. And definitely dark themes, you know. When you think about it. You know, I don't know, it depends on your compartmentalize. Uh, compartmentalize? 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 What's the word? Compartmentalize. 
compartmentalize is, is the word I'm trying to say. It depends how you compartmentalize the whole witch thing, you know. Do you consider witches people, by the way? It seems like they apparently grow out of nowhere, you know. They're like magic and they have nuclei, you know, and they're bored. And they have they have sentience, I guess, but I don't know. Um, but like the whole like eating people thing, you know, it's like for, to consume their powers. That's kind of like, I don't know. Again, depends on how you like interpret that. Do you interpret that as them simply... Like, do the witches... It's impl heavily implied that the witches all come from the same source, right? So really, they're just magical beings. Um, and they're all, you know, just separated from each other. But, like, really what she's doing is, like, putting them back together in a way, you know? It's like a hive mind, right? And, but, like... I mean, obviously, it's very bloody and gory. And maybe that's not the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway. But yeah. Uh, definitely, you know... Same same vibes as the last game, um, and just in general, I guess the developers' games. You know, a little bit. You know, it seems like sweet and innocent, but like definitely a lot of very dark and morbid themes, which I like. You know, I like that. I like the games. Uh, what do you call it when they're like, you know, I guess sweet and sour. Was there a game jam like that? I don't think it was in this game jam, but stuff like that. You know, they're like cutesy, but also incredibly, incredibly, you know, horrific and 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 bloody and violent. At the same time, you know, I don't know. I, don't, I like that sort of thing, I guess, you know, but it depends. I usually like it when it's more psychological, you know, anyway. But there you go. I guess that's it for Cherry Witched. Um, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's it. Um, I repeat myself, uh, what, I, what I usually say? Oh, yeah, I usually say, like, if you're on YouTube, if you didn't know, I stream these games live on Twitch, so check me out over there if you're interested. I also have other playthroughs on the channel, so you can look for those if you want to. If you haven't yet, you can also check out developers' other games that I did on my, on my channel, which was Berry Witched. Um, there's also uh, another good one was Little Red Memories. And another one, I think, what was it? It was called uh, From the Sun to the Moon. You know, I, all, the, all the games that the developer makes has kind of, kind of the same um, tone <laughs> to it. So if you like it, you know, you can definitely look for more. But there you go. Uh, I guess, you know, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then. <laughs>